Hello lads and lasses, welcome in my PvP guide for Death Knights in Dragonflight. Currently there are two types of unholy DKs, but due to the fact that I don't really like minion playstyle, I will cover all important aspects of playing the shadow version of the build. Enjoy. Alright lads and lasses, let's start over the default Death Knight tree. So uh, first we get Chains of Eyes, which is our bread and butt slow, Death Strike, our healing ability, and raise death by default. Um, cleaving Strike is not really mandatory for PvP because we will not be cleaving that much, but it has its uses from time to time. Anti-Magic Shell with uh, Anti-Magic Barrier Improvement, which allows us to have a shorter cooldown and more uh, damage absorbed. And in here we've got Mind Freeze, which is our... Uh, interrupt blinding seed very nice cc mostly because i always thought that these orients are gonna break on any damage but it seems that it's not in this case because it actually has some kind of uh, damage threshold the target has to take for it to break so it's nice for setting up kills and even you know just keeping the target steady for a couple of seconds uh permafrost nuts uh adds some uh small barrier to our auto attacks but it can add up over the course of a fight uh, improve their strike more healing march of darkness a uh, very nice uh, improvement for uh, our mobility especially that we'll be going for uh, two stacks of our mobility skills so it's nice to have an extra sprint let's say sacrificial pact a uh, very good defensive cooldown because it allows us to heal us up and uh, resummon the pet straight away so we don't lose that much and a feeble is nice because uh, actually the target we attack, the ghouls attack, uh, can be actually, um, and they, they just deal less damage to you, so uh, it's very nice to have movement speed, not important, but it's also nice because it's passive. Bridge also, this is have a chance to weaken uh, your enemy, uh, causing them, your attacks against them to deal 6% more damage, so just, you know, uh, another buff to get a uh, veteran of the third war most health eyes about to force to do it with the acclimation uh, improvement which allows us to actually have this every two minutes which is nice and merciless strides is a two percent crit i put it this talent in here because the rest actually it was most most worth from all the talents in this build and uh, leftover talents let's say uh, anti-magic zone so another very nice magic uh, resistant spell. Uh, it's still going to cool down a little bit longer, but it has its uses, especially under heavy pressure. Uh, Mind of Thessarian, strength increased by 2%. And then we go to more interesting things. So a 68, the standard stun for the DK from a couple of years now. Death Pact, uh, nice healing ability, although with a drawback that you, you actually really have to use it only as a last stand. Uh, like last resort because uh, you do heal up for half of your HP but you also put on yourself like a debuff that 30% of your maximum health uh, incoming healing will be absorbed actually by this so you either have to be under heavy healing uh, to use this comfortably or you just you know, like I said have to use it like a last resort where you will not use any more death strikes or anything like that so you just you know pump as much damage in short period of time as possible uh, next up unholy endurance we do have the lich born which basically in this case uh, turns into more defensive cooldown rather than just pure fear uh, immunity because it increases its duration and also uh, the damage taken is reduced by 50% on top of that on top of everything we have in here also it increases the leech by 10% so it's nice to uh, like you know preemptively turn it on before like burst and stuff like that wraith walk uh, actually removes the root and adds some very nice mobility uh, to our limited uh, mobility toolkit so nice to have unholy ground is mostly prerequisite for the death's echo but it's nice to have from time to time drop like a death indicator increase that haste and do some cleave damage with cleaving strikes then we go into the passive will of necropolis which basically reduces the damage we take under 30 percent health so just allows us to stay alive a little bit longer in this execute phase and death echo actually gives us death's advance death and decay and death grip have one additional charge which basically improves our mobility by quite a lot because we've got two death grips so it's hard to actually run away from us we can grip them slow them they uh, you know run away then grip them slow them once again and that's advanced uh, with this 
by the boy in here, March of Darkness, actually you have two very nice prints uh, to use at our disposal with not really that uh, long cooldown, so uh, very nice to have. And the last we got the Rune Mastery to increase some strength and Abomination Limb, which everybody knows basically our one of the, our offensive cooldowns. Now, uh, into the Unholy Talons, we of course take a uh, Festering Strike, Scorch Strike, Raise Dead, uh, Dark Transformation, which makes our pet more powerful, Outbreak to allow more uh, spread pressure, and then we go into more interesting and more specific specific things. I just make a quick note that this is not like the Necromancer build, uh, but the like in the beginning of the video, the Necromancer, but you know the Shadow build where we actually rely more on uh, increased strength and unholy assault in here. So just keep that in mind. So we take Unholy Blight, very nice offensive cooldown that basically allows us to uh, not only apply all dots but also give uh, adds up uh, one more into that. Improved Festering Strike for more damage. Uh, infected Claws just basically passively allows us to get some more Festering Wounds. Sudden Doom, very nice because it basically allows us to shoot three damage. Uh, free death coil we take also the plague bringer which actually allows us to strike to make our disease occur 100 percent more so very very powerful uh usually try to use it before even the burst window even without any uh, uh any uh festering wound on the target because it will increase your pressure tremendously before bursting down uh, targets uh, Apocalypse, very important of course, summon more uh, pets and deal some damage, replenish wound, so basically it adds up more runic power thanks to popping the festering strikes. Urban Fever, Virulent Plague deals 50% more damage over time in half the duration, so you see we got plenty of talents that basically uh, allow our dots to deal damage faster, that's why they are so deadly and they are so easy to spread actually, uh, so that's why they actually de Death Knights get so much damage in BGs. Unholy Command, just one point because we are we are kind of short on them, so I reduce the cooldown of Dark Transformation, so our big pet. Uh, we'll also take, of course, the Magus of the Dead. Uh, it turns one of our undead minions into the mage, which casts Frost Bolts, which is nice. Improved Death Coil, uh, actually it deals more damage and seeks an additional enemy, so it cleaves. So we can cleave with Scorch Strike, we can cleave with Death Coil, so nice to have. In here, Unholy Pact, basically between you and your pet, uh, there is some kind of uh, connection. Unholy Pact that uh, a f creates a flaming chain that deals damage. Uh, pretty nice damage, and uh, it's sometimes very, very easy to even, you know, take people out of stealth if you, if you know where they are, actually. Uh, reaping, just like our execute phase, increase the damage of all our abilities below 35% health, very nice to have. And Pestilence, the Death in the Decay has 10% chance to apply a festering wound to the enemy, so we do add up a couple of things to our Death in the Decay, so you know, it's not just a pure damage, but a uh, very, very nice utility spell as well, so you do have, it will be hard to actually uh, remember it by heart to use it, especially in eerie situations, but when you actually start to utilize it, you're gonna see a big significance in damage dealt in BGs. Uh, next up, we take Death Rot on the left side, uh, which basically allows us to increase the shadow damage the target takes with every attack we make almost. Uh, faster might popping a festering wound increases your sense strength by 2% for 20 seconds. It does not reflect duration, so uh, when you start popping that damage, it's just gonna stack the strength for you, but it's not gonna uh, last long, only 20 seconds, and then it's gonna reset and start the cycle anew, so, but, you know, those strength modifiers really, really make some very nice damage increase, so nice to have, and Unholy Assault, uh, love this over the Gargoyle, basically, uh, because first it adds 20% haste, which is quite a lot, and on top of that deals very nice damage, and it just easier it just easier to make our burst damage because we can pop unholy assault with the trinket on and then straight up go for apocalypse and dark transformation uh, which is just basically less of a fuss to go over then we take army of the dead 
which basically uh, summons all of our pets to do our bidding. Army of the Dam, very nice because the Apocalypse is the cooldown is reduced, and on top of that, Death Call reduces the cooldown of Army of Dead. So it's eight minute cooldown, but with this talent, it's actually a lot shorter, so it's not as bad. Uh, Super Strain, your veteran plague also applies frost fever and block play at 80% effectiveness, so it adds uh, the rest of our dots. Uh, the, actually, the block plague is not really that uh, powerful, but the frost fever actually as like uh, it doubles the damage of our diseases, so nice to have. And we take morbidity, disease enemies take 2% increased damage from your pair. Uh, disease they are affected by so with unholy blood we've got four diseases on the target so it's eight uh, sorry yeah eight percent uh, damage increase so very nice to have as it comes for the pvp talents i love to have strangle light against the casters uh, necrotic wounds just for the healers you know it just absorbs some of the healing and heals you up for the very small amount uh, but the most important thing is the absorption of course and in here we actually have some choices about this uh, build I recommend Dumbo Doom Burst uh, because when it actually procs the Sudden Doom when we proc the Sudden Doom Death Core will actually um, burst two festering wounds on the target and on top of that will increase the move reduce the movement speed by 90% uh, per burst because no 45 percent per burst so 90 percent in total uh, so very very nice against those you know running away stuff but i also like you know procs in the specs and that when those procs ha are of some kind of significant significance and uh, actually don't burst allows us to have something like that and if you don't really like it you can swap it over for uh, either spell warden for more defensive Okay, build this or raise abomination uh, because it's pretty powerful, especially that it applies festering wounds to everybody around, and you don't have to waste uh, your runes for festering uh, strikes, just straight up uh, scorch strikes. Alright, guys, with the talents out of the way, let's go into the gearing phase. Okay, guys, as for the gear, uh, we mainly want to go for the mastery and haste. Then, uh, crit is not really that important for us. Uh, haste is nice because you know, on top of our unholy assault, we do get like 40% uh, haste, which is crazy. The all the uh, globals go so fast, actually, which is very nice. And uh, but the main stat is actually mastery because it increases basically the damage of our minions and the shadow damage. So, pretty much all the damage we deal is shadow, except for like minions. But the minions are increased as well, so we don't have to worry about that. So, this is our like our main source of damage. So, it's always nice to have. Of course, we take versatility gear uh, with the secondary stat with either mastery or haste. Um, prioritize mastery as much as possible and the other just fill other pieces with haste uh, which uh, don't have them so and that will be it for the gearing and now let's go into the preview all right guys as for the playstyle, we do want to keep our diseases with outbreak as much as possible spread them everywhere especially when you're in a situation where uh, both themes like you know struggling to start the charge and nobody wants to go in you can just you know it's nice because you ha do have some pressure from afar you can just send your pet in then you know, apply the disease from afar so it's always good to have and if you just want to do some steady damage you know you also apply the uh, dots go in a uh, scorch strike a uh, festering strike just apply some dots then you know uh, burst them up with your scorch strike drop some death coil drop even more festering wound with the festering strikes and then just you know execute them with a scorch strike uh, for even more damage and runic power then you know spend it with your death coils and rinse and repeat always remember that with this build your main uh, diseased uh, your main disease only lasts like eight seconds so it's very short so actually in this build you do have to reapply the dots pretty often uh, you know as you can see the frost fever lasts pretty long but you know the main the virulent, virulent plague actually lasts only for uh, seven seconds actually 
with all the talents we have taken. But the damage is also pretty crazy, especially when you use your Scorch Strike. You can see now how fast the dots will be ticking there, just constantly. There's like no window when nothing ticks, so this is pretty powerful. That's why the Mastery is also so important to have. Uh, okay, but what else comes down to the burst when you actually want to go in? Like I said before, if you don't really have even any... Um, Festering uh, wounds on the target. You do want to use a scorch strike just to get this bath plate ringer uh, to the dots deal more target, and especially want to use it before you actually use your know, unholy blight. This is a very big damaging ability, especially with this talent. So it's nice to have. Uh, you don't really have to pop any festering wounds, so you have to use it. You can use this separately, and this is nice to use before uh, you're doing your actual burst. Um, other than that, you know, just you just pop this and then you go with your trinket, unholy assault, straight up into apocalypse, summon the dark transformation, unholy blight, and abomination's limb. You can actually choose to use your unholy blight and abomination's limb, limb a little bit faster. But I actually want to have all the haste possible from the Unholy Assault. And after Unholy Assault, you also want to use Apocalypse as soon as possible. Be you know, not just not to waste uh, the uptime of your minions or the target. So it's also important. And, you know, Unholy dra dra Dark Transformation is uh, probably a thing that you can use a little bit earlier before all that stuff. And on Holy Blight, you want to use it with your trinkets up, with all the haste, and with the score strike buff up. So, uh, this is what is important. And then, of course, try to uh, apply and uh, exec and uh, actually burst as many festering wounds as possible just to build up this Fester Might strength 14k. Uh, 40% uh, strength increase. So, as you can see, Death Colts are shooting for like 14k, uh, which is pretty nice. Without it, it's only 12, so it added 2k just for the uh, pure death call. And you know, you do deal damage from many sources, not only like single targets. So you can you don't see many big hits, but actually the damage is adding up pretty crazy uh, overall. So as you can see, my cooldowns are coming back down. So again, I just use Trinket, Unholy Assault, Apocalypse, uh, Unholy Blight, and uh, Dark Transformation, then use as many scorch strikes as possible if you see the proc use it straight away just to pop more uh, festering wounds actually as you can see the cooldown the the global cooldown is pretty fast with all these up so this is really really deadly and yeah like i said when against melee uh, with this build, you can actually, you know, apply some dots, use your scorch strike, stuff like that, and you can just kind them away, you know, just pulling, uh, um, like chains of ice, you know, reapplying the dots, shooting some death calls. When then they come into you, use your scorch strike just to get this buff once again, apply some festering strikes, and you can strike kiting once again, shooting death calls, reapplying dots, and stuff like that. This is actually a very, very uh, good strategy against any melee, especially, you know, things like Rogue when they open on your ferals and you already have half of your HP lost because of that so this can actually help you to live a little bit longer uh, other than that try to utilize your CC as much as possible uh, firstly you'll probably want to start off with a simple stun with it like asphy asphyxiate uh, or maybe even not if you're in in the melee you want to start with blinding sleet especially uh, when there are many people because then you can prepare all your burst uh, in the meantime and you know uh, try Popping it when uh, with the asphyxiate on. You go also like yeah, blinding seed like I said. Now other than that, always try to use asphyxiate before the ignore. The noise rather more like an, it should be treated more like an interrupt or just you know uh, stopping somebody for a second. Mostly because uh, it only lasts for one second, so it, your next stun will be actually. Uh, halved if you use it after the gnaw so this is pretty important and you also got a uh, strangulate which is uh, off global cooldown uh, silence for four seconds uh, it's very nice because it has its uses almost against all classes even against warrior you can prevent getting feared and stuff like that if you silence them so it's good to have other than that you know shamans death knights 
red paladin and stuff like that they also use some kind of uh magic in the toolkit so silence is up there as well and also i haven't used the army of the dead in this burst scenario uh because it's not so much important of course uh with this build because we rely more on shadow damage rather than the minions but they do add up uh quietly uh quite nicely so always also remember about them other than that we don't really have any more utilities in the toolkit like i said you also have your death and decay which actually increases the haste even uh faster if it makes it even faster our spells and stuff like that but you know the role is marginal and you mostly would like to use it to so, you know getting rogues, rogues or ferals out of stealth and stuff like that but it has its uses anti-magic zone you can stand still in it and it will be absorbed the damage so good to have uh, i always uh, try to pre-use anti-magic shell with the, those two spells i rather use anti-magic shell like an anti-cc thing and anti-magic zone when i actually get really stuck and somebody is uh, pooping on me so if you know uh, if i find myself in point of no escape then i try to use anti-magic zone but if i want to apply you know offensive pressure and stuff like that actually offense is the best defense so you know you want to apply as much pressure as possible and then uh, hold it up tightly with anti-magic shell especially at the last seven seconds and they won't be really able to pump that much damage when you are running for like an early shaman stuff like that uh, so it will be hard to cc you because you will be immune for most of the things and uh Except for like knockbacks, I think. I think knockbacks still work against anti-magic shell, but other things probably don't. So uh, this is one thing to note. Uh, but yeah, guys, I think I covered mostly everything. Like I said uh, earlier, I tried to use Death Pact uh, as a last resort. As you can see, it will bring like a debuff that next 80,000. Mm, uh, healing received will be absorbed so it's probably something like three or four death strikes so you don't really have time uh, for it if you're dying anyway so uh, Icebound 4 to do it is a little bit shorter cooldown with nice damage reduction so always remember that and it actually makes us immune to stun so it's pretty important for us as well and you can see that with marching uh, march of darkness the death advance is pretty fast look Okay, pretty short sprint, and then it actually falls to 135% speed, but it's still pretty good. Especially that our slow is actually the most potent in the game, uh, like, you know, spammable slow that actually uh, is slowing others by 70%, so this is quite significant. Uh, all right, guys, I think I covered mostly everything. Uh, if you still wonder if you should actually choose Unholy DK, uh, please check uh, the video that you can see up in the screen next.